Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. I have dozens of bonus videos posted that will help you in these areas and also will help you develop stronger coping skills. In each of the program notes, there's a link where you can request a free digital book, Understanding Your Dreams, where you can find my other media and also where you can find my books on Amazon. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Now here's today's episode. Welcome to this week's episode of Life Without Baggage. Today, I'm going to continue talking about secrets to prayer. And last time we talked about some do's and don'ts for effective prayer and prayer that will help you grow in your faith and grow in your coping skills. So today I'm going to be talking about aspects of ways we can use prayer in managing stress, in improving our view of God, to cultivate a view of God that gives you joy and doesn't just produce uh, a sense of duty or obligation, that there would be more joy connected to your spiritual life in your prayer. Before I get into today's episode, I would ask that if you're enjoying these principles that I've been sharing, would you consider picking up one of my books on Amazon? Today, I'm going to be sharing from the Bible study book, Breakthrough into Blessings, If you're looking for a Bible study, it will help you in your faith, help you understand ways to grow in your view of God. And if you've been listening to my podcast, you know I have two devotional books as well, a workbook, and two books that will help you with personal coping and understanding distortions and understanding yourself. So consider picking up one of those for yourself or a friend. So let's get into today's episode. So as I mentioned, many people incorporate prayer as part of their spiritual life and also as part of how they manage stress. So I'm going to talk about the concept today of what the Bible calls rest. Now, when we think about rest, we think about, you know, maybe getting some sleep or a nap or sitting down in between activities. But the term that the Bible uses is really very profound. It has a lot of uh, shades and colors of meaning. So I'm going to share a little bit of that with you because I think, again, it will help you as you manage stress, as you pray and to cultivate a view of God that gives you joy and doesn't just produce uh, a sense of duty or obligation, that there would be more joy connected to your spiritual life in your prayer. So it might be good to start with kind of an image. If you think about when you sit down in a chair to rest, that all of your weight is just leaning into that chair so that chair can support you. It takes the pressure off and it's comforting. It's relaxing. Well, we can do the same thing with our soul, with our personality, that we can learn how to lean into the presence of God, the love of God, and do that in our prayer time but also learn how to do that more and more as a lifestyle. The Lord invites us to do that, to take the the load off, as some people might say, to cast our burdens on him, to learn how to rest, to learn how to be still. Last time I talked about the do's and don'ts. So this time I'm going to talk more about some attitudes and some principles that can increase your sense of peace, and the depth in your prayers. So you may have heard me quote the verse Psalm 4610, 
be still and know that I am God, that there's an aspect of being still and inviting God's presence where there's more of a sense of his presence. We open ourselves to communing with him, just like you might sit with a friend or a pet. And also, we are open to listening. We tend to think of prayer as talking, but we also want to think about prayer as sitting and listening so that God gets a turn to talk. Another verse that's really interesting, I got really fascinated by this verse at at one point in my Christian life. It's been a few decades, but it had a profound impact So I'm going to read this to you from the Amplified Bible. You know, that's my favorite translation. This is Isaiah 30, verse 15. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning to me and resting in me, you shall be saved. In quietness and in trusting confidence shall be your strength. So here we get the picture of peace, and confidence and strength coming from learning how to rest in the Lord. And that's the best time really to pray because when you are peaceful, when you're still in his presence, it seems as though there's just a lot less interference and commotion as we talk to the Lord. And again, being able to receive peace, being able to receive strategies, Some of my best ideas (laughs) come from being still in the Lord. That's where a lot of my creativity seems to come from. Back in 2021 or the beginning of 2022, I did a series on gifts from heaven. And one of the gifts from heaven is creativity. It's an aspect of what the spirit of God, God is a creator. So it makes sense that he can give us expand our creative abilities in a way that gives us joy, brings joy to other people, gives us creative strategies for managing life, and even creative ways to pray. So I'm going to read some portions from my book called Breaking Through to Blessing. If you're watching this on video, you see a picture of the cover there. And this chapter is on rest. So I'm just going to read a few sections. Rest is a choice, but it's not religious effort. Remember, I compared it to sitting in a chair. It's peaceful, but it's not passive. We take time to soak up his presence, allow downloads of his life to flow into our being, and then we carry his peace and his presence with us throughout the day. The Bible calls this abiding or walking in the spirit. In other words, when we're resting in him, we are energized. It's sort of a paradox. A lot of things in the Christian life, it's supernatural and it's a paradox that as we yield, we become more alive and we become more of what God intended for us to be, not defined by what we're going through or what other people say, but we're energized to be our best self and to make an impact and to have a positive influence on the world around us, to build the kingdom of God. And there's great joy and satisfaction in doing that. We can take joy in our families, in our careers, in nature, in our hobbies, But we also want to be building something eternal, building into the kingdom of God. If you know the Lord, you want to serve him in a way that is life-giving to you and to other people. So as we, again, learn how to rest in the Lord, how to draw from his presence for a deeper sense of peace, then we're transformed, it says in 2 Corinthians 3.18. There's so much intertwining between prayer and reading the word of God and deepening our connection to the Lord. It's hard for me to kind of separate those out. But as we learn how to draw from his presence, then we will have more wisdom of how to pray. 
2 Corinthians 3.18 says, And all of us, as with unveiled face, continue to behold in the word of God as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are constantly being transformed into his very own image in ever-increasing splendor and from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So this verse reminds us that our power to live the Christian life, our power to grow and change, we all have rough spots. We all have things that we need to work on. But the power to change comes from the Lord. If you've ever tried to change something all by yourself, you can grit your teeth if it's something really at the core of your being. You know, giving up an addiction, giving up sugar, changing how you eat, changing an attitude, being persistent and pleasant as you go through something difficult. If we only rely on our own strength, it's going to be a tremendous effort. But when we learn how to rest in the Lord and draw on his peace, he transforms us. He, he teaches us how to pray. And he gives us strategies for how to cope with the difficult places in life. We learn how to rest in him, to live more out of our spirit. The Christian life is a supernatural life. And as we learn how to tap into that supernatural aspect of it, it's not weird. It's more of just learning how to abide in the Lord and cooperate with him and commune with him. But it's necessary to carve out some time, probably early in your day, so that you start off with the attitude and with the peace and the power that you need. So as we learn how to rest in the Lord, it's going to impact how we pray, our attitude while we wait, and help us to be faithful through times where we're not really getting the answers we want. I'm going to read a little bit more from that chapter on rest. Supernatural peace, supernatural love and power come from a yielded life then he downloads his love, his strength, and wisdom into our spirits through his Holy Spirit. So then our prayer, it isn't driven by fear. It isn't driven by our own agendas. And it isn't driven by a sense of duty. But it's more of leaning into his presence and then having a conversation and listening for his answer. We can have as much of God as we want. So take time to rest in Jesus. As you begin to see him, you'll find it easier to trust him. You'll find it easier to pray. You'll have more wisdom as you pray. You'll have more peace as you go through the challenges of life. And he will teach you. His word gives us the principles of how to live successfully and his presence gives us the peace and the power as we pray to understand his word and also to live a successful life regardless of what's going on around you. So to close, I'm going to read a blessing for us from Romans chapter 8. This is verse 9, and this time I'm reading from the Passion Translation. May the Spirit of God empower your life. May you be led by his life in you rather than your old ways of thinking and feeling. And may you know for certain you are joined to Jesus every moment of your day. So I hope those ideas will help you as you pray, as you yield your concerns to the Lord, as you learn how to grow in your faith. So if you enjoyed these principles, think about picking up a copy of Breaking Through to Blessing. It's the Bible study that I read from today. And if this helped you, share it with a friend. Talk to you next time.